how you come up with your color choices in your class story driven illustrations on schoolism uh, lesson five is all about color choices but how do you come up with your color choices for your illustrations yeah so um i've talked about how i really like uh gathering reference and you know just uh having it there to refer to later on so i'm always on the lookout for color schemes that i really really like um, and I have a folder with like color and lighting that I can go to if I want to uh, draw an illustration. So um, since it's all about story, my starting point is that I, you know, I have a story in mind and I have a mood in mind that I want to convey. So I'm like, okay, this is this should feel like very cozy and warm and inviting and familiar. So. Immediately, my mind goes to like uh, warm sunlight, yellow, orange, red, and then I just browse all the pictures I have, and I, you know, save the ones that I think evoke that feeling very well. So I just take them and put them on my mood board or on my reference board, so that I can have that as a starting point for what I'm doing. And the colors are going to change throughout the process. I'm looking at other people's artwork and photos and stuff, but. Um, I just want them as a guideline for me to just get get the process going. And throughout all this uh, color picking and painting and mixing that I'm doing, the colors will change from where I started. But it's just very, very nice to get inspired first because, you know, uh, so many other people have solved the same problems that you're trying to solve in your illustration. How do you convey a feeling of like despair or um, loneliness or like happiness and um, coziness? So it's just a really good idea to just keep looking at different things. And what I like to do is um, approach color and light a little bit uh, separately. I know they play together, of course, and they will in the course of uh, me painting an illustration, but I like to just uh, put down base colors first and make sure those work as a palette. Um, so the way I do that is I just have my lines and then underneath I put down like one base color that is going to determine the scheme for the painting. And then I select that and then I go to my color wheel and I don't go too far from that. I will select a color that is that works very harmoniously with the one I've had before. And then from there I will go and take the next color and pick the next color. And um, sometimes when I'm experimenting I just like to put down a new layer and then uh, paint with a color that might be just a little bit like out of place, not you know harmonious with the others. And I see what it looks like, I see how I like it, if it just feels wrong or if it uh, fits very well in the overall scheme. And if I want to try out something else, I just use the uh, hue saturation slider to just slide it around and see what happens. And sometimes that gives me happy accidents that I didn't really expect. And that is very nice because my whole process is kind of intuitive and I don't really stick to the plan that I... Uh, laid out for myself necessarily like most of the times I do but it can just go into different directions and I just like to let that happen um, and yeah as soon as I have the base colors down I will uh, go in and add in the lighting so I like to do that also with like all those photoshop tools like with adjustment layers and layer modes like overlay is really really nice to put in uh, lighting and multiply is really nice to put in shadows so I like to do that um, yeah, that's kind of my process. And you touch on color theory as well. Yes. Now, some people might be like, well, why do you need color theory if you get a lot of your ideas from reference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, color theory is very useful. Um, it's just that for me, it's always kind of a backwards process because I know color theory exists and um, I like to use it to come back to to refresh my memory but it's as I said it's very intuitive I just start out and I do things and I'm like oh this is working oh it's working because it's a complementary color scheme so of course I know these things but while I'm working um, I'm just you know going through all the things very intuitively and putting down colors that I 
feel all right. I know this is terrible uh, for someone who's like, explain it to me. How does this work? But um, well, you need both, um, right? You need both. Yeah, you right. need that intuition. You got to follow your gut. But also yeah. to know why it works and things like that, then you can sharpen that yes. thing that you're doing. And, and I'm definitely going to go into uh, how I, you know, do color like step by step, what I pay attention to, like what my thought process is. But for me, it's like uh, when I get stuck, when I'm like, why is this not working? Why does this look weird? I go back to color theory and I'm like, oh, I could introduce this kind of color, like a split complementary palette or uh, something similar. So that helps me uh, get out of, you know, the, the hole I've got myself into sometimes. But uh, overall, I think, yeah, I wanted to uh, do the course in a way where I'm like, this is the proper way. This is the stuff that is very, very useful to know. And this is how I actually really do it without always thinking about color theory um but just to cover those two things because yeah in photoshop it's so easy to mess around you know when you're like i want to do an underwater color scheme you can just start off with like uh basic colors that have nothing to do with blue you just want a person underwater you just paint their skin and then you paint their hair how you would do it under daylight and then you slap like a blue layer on top of it and then it's just like oh it looks like underwater this is really nice and that's what I do most of the time really so um it is nice to go back and to refer to color theory to be like oh yeah this is how it would have painted it the proper way you know picking out the bluish tones in the beginning and going from there well there's a million different ways to do a million different things all brilliantly and this is a great one some of the key takeaways for people that want to try this at home is next time you start illustration, just like Jamila said, start off with a main base color first and then start adding in colors, but not thinking so much about lighting just yet. Try to make those colors work with just the base tones. I love that. I love that tip. That's something that I'm going to start experimenting with as well. The other thing that I really love is how you said that you are very intuitive with your color choices, but as well in your class, when you're talking about colors in lesson five, you also talk about color theory. So it's not like you're just doing it blind. You're letting your intuition kind of drive many of your decisions and you're sharpening all those decisions, making them so impactful and so purposeful, right? Like you're doing it very on purpose because you also understand color theory. So if people want to know more, check out Jamila's class on schoolism.com, story-driven illustrations with Jamila Kanoff. Thank you very much.